This presentation is an overview of the Lake Waconia Regional Park Waterfront Service Center. My name is Glenn Wagespeck. I'm an architect with HGA Architects in Minneapolis. Um, we were hired by Carver County in 2019 to develop building program, space programs for um, facilities located within the park. This slide is an overview of the entire Lake Waconia Regional Park. Highway 5 is sort of off the frame to the south. Um, Paradise Lane is this road here that connects the park to Highway 5. Our area of focus is within this um, yellow dashed rectangle boundary, specifically the central plaza area of the park, which includes the Waterfront Service Center building that I'll go into detail about today. Um, this mass, our site plan shows that waterfront service center building area that surrounds a central plaza. This is the existing event center ballroom, existing parking, and this is the beach um, on the shore of Lake Waconia. Um, the preliminary space program uh, that we came up with was for a waterfront service center that includes several interior and exterior um, program spaces. Interior includes a multi-purpose activity and event space, building attendant lifeguard workstation, a concession and rental space with its rental storage adjacent, um, restrooms for use by the public, changing rooms for use by people uh, that are using the beach, and a lobby. Um, there is 8,000 square feet roughly of covered exterior seating area and then a few site amenities including a connection to the beach, a path, a waterfront launch area for non-motorized uh, watercraft like canoes and kayaks that could be rented from the facilities, and a multi-purpose dock uh, that includes an accessible dock, um, a ferry connection for a future ferry to Coney Island, um, and uh, functions such as that. The overall design concept, and this is preliminary, um, the outer boundary, yellow boundary shows the rough construction limits or approximate construction limits of the project to show you what's included. That includes the waterfront service center building, which I'll go into more detail momentarily. The launch area on the beach, that would be for non-motorized watercraft a multi-purpose dock that would allow ferries to dock for ferry service to Coney Island, um, a connection to the beach, some sort of path that it could include shower facilities, um, and then a connection to the existing parking lot. Um, restrooms and changing rooms within the building uh, would serve the beach. There would be a shower adjacent to the beach. Um, park activities and concessions are combined into one program within the building serving the beach, the rental launch, and food service uh, for the sheltered area. The building itself becomes a backdrop for a large uh, lawn that could sponsor events such as concerts, art festivals, fairs, uh, movie night, fitness events, etc. that could see 2,000 to 4,000 spectators roughly in that area. Um, as I mentioned, the concession is adjacent to the rental launch as well as a proposed future boardwalk. Um, and near the lake shore. Uh, a central plaza includes sheltered cafe style seating um, under two um, roofs that are shown currently that are integrated with the building. Um, and then finally, there's a multi-purpose room that's adjacent to lawn games and activity area that is all oriented for views to the lake. Here's the building plan in a little bit more detail. It's a diagram. Um, the lighter colors show a concessions area where um, folks can rent um, boats and equipment or uh, uh, also buy food. There'd be some sort of concessions there for food, um, serving the seating, sheltered seating area and the adjacent site. Um, storage would be for rental equipment and for the building generally. There'd be a toilet and changing area, changing rooms especially serving um, the beach. And then um, down on the south end of the building, we're showing uh, a diagram for an activity room that could seat up to 80 uh, people at tables that could be rented out for events 
and have some adjacency to the salon games and activities area. Here's an aerial view of the project. You'll see the, the lake on the left, the beach, um, the existing parking. The existing event center and ballroom is in the background. This is the waterfront service center building. It kind of straddles a path that becomes the dock for ferries. You can see the uh, watercraft launch here. Um, and then the large lawn that could sponsor, in this case, we're showing some sort of music event. So the building would serve as a backdrop for all sorts of events and activities on the site. Backing up a bit, we studied the history of Waconia and Coney Island. Waconia was historically a resort town um, serving folks from the Twin Cities who would go there and take the train out there on weekends. Um, here are a couple of, view of historic photographs on the left um, from Coney Island. Here's one of the buildings. Um, the island was originally developed um, as a resort. There were cabins, hotels, dance halls. This is a house. Um, and the buildings on Coney Island and in this area had a very uh, similar um, architectural language of porches that were used um, as gathering spaces. There's also boat launches to get to and from Coney Island um, from Waconia. And so those are some features that we picked up on in the, in the conceptual design of the facility um, in terms of porches that are used to shelter people from the sun and perhaps the rain, a boat launch that's a, a key part of the rental offerings here on site. This was a way to knit the new into the old historic fabric of Waconia um, and make something really interesting um, and architecturally significant on this prime lakeside site. Here's a view showing a conceptual idea of what a porch could look like or boardwalk could look like. You can see the cafe seating underneath this area. In the distance is Coney Island and the beach um, where the umbrellas are. Here's a view from the water looking back towards the building. The beach is on the right. Uh, a new building on the left. This is just a conceptual view. You can see sheltered areas. This glass corner here is the rental area, which has proximity to uh, the ferry dock, the water, the non-motorized watercraft launch, and the beach. All of those uh, site amenities that will be served by rentals. The project um, is receiving state funding um, and therefore will be required to meet the B3 requirements of the state, buildings, benchmark, and beyond. Um, this is, these are requirements that, that any state-funded building have to meet to make them more energy efficient and sustainable and use less resources. Um, dealing with uh, aspects of a project such as stormwater, energy efficiency, uh, materials and waste um, that are created during construction, as well as air quality for buildings. The current cost estimate for the building, an overall project cost of $5 million, includes $3.9 million for construction costs of the building, $300,000 of site work costs, and then $800,000 of soft costs, fees, permitting, that sort of thing, um, which add up to an overall project cost of $5 million. There are some additional alternates that the county is interested in um, studying, including outdoor warming areas with fire pits, uh, lawn, at, lawn activity areas, um, site furniture, and lighting the existing parking lot. Now I'm going to give a, a quick overview of the current process. Right now we're in phase one, which is a proof of concept phase. Um, phase two is for the future design and construction um, of the project, which if it goes forward, would um, be constructed in 2021 and 2022. But let's focus on phase one, the proof of concept. That includes uh, community engagement, um, public engagement, engagement with key stakeholders, um, group, uh, community groups that might use the building, 
um, and then a technical advisory group of county staff and some peers. Um, that process uh, for phase one proof of concept looks like this. Um, currently, in mid it's mid-December, there's been a public notice of the process and an online survey um, of questions about how people use this or might use this facility um, open online. In January, our design team will gather input from stakeholders and also county staff um, in the lead up to a January 21st virtual public open house. Um, on the 15th of January, the online survey closes and then the results of the stakeholder meetings, staff meetings and uh, public open house feedback meeting will be um, presented to the Carver County Board for review on January 26th. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, please contact Martin Walsh, the Parks and Rec Director for Carver County um, at the email address mwalsh at co.carver.mn.us. Thank you.